from Fox 55 Sports. This is The Locker Room. say good evening to you. I'm Justin Prince. That man to my left is Peter Hood. If you're new here, this is a little show we like to call The Locker Room. Thank you, as always, for making us a part of your Friday night and buckle up because we've got a jam-packed 30 minutes coming at you. We're about to show you highlights from 14 local high school football games. Prep insider Justin Kenny will join us later to break it all down. He's right over there, warming up. (laughs) But Pete, we begin with a big-time early season showdown in the SAC. Yeah, I, I, I thought, before we get into it, I thought we were going to get rained on tonight. I did too. And and the, the high school football gods smiled upon they sure us. Did. We somehow avoided it. Yeah, last week the SAC was full of surprises, wasn't it? But perhaps no team in the area raised more eyebrows than the Northside Legends, who handed Snyder their most lopsided loss since 2013. Now all eyes are on Mike Brevard and company as they try to knock off yet another perennial power in Bishop Dwinger. It's a battle between two top 10 teams in Class 5A in your locker room game of the week. Northside ranked eighth in the state following that big win over the Panthers. Number four Dwinger coming off a comfortable win over Wayne in their season opener. Pick this one up third quarter. Saints up a touchdown, but here come the legends. Deuce Taylor finds Rodney Woods over the middle for a big game in big gain into BD territory. Moments later, this time it's Taylor with a short toss to uh, Bronte Johnson. And uh, Johnson does the rest here, Prince. This kid's a freshman, if I read the roster right. Fighting off tacklers like a grown man, though. Takes it all the way in for six. Northside's within two. So, of course, they go for two, and they give it to two. Taylor just able to get it over the goal line. Two-point conversion successful. We're all tied at 14. But the Saints have an answer. Ensuing possession, Brendan Lytle rolling and hitting Rocco Siocha. You like this kid, Prince? I do. He's, he's big. He's going to be good. He's a big boy. A big game for the junior. Puts BD in position. They get a little bit closer here. Lytle dumps it off to Devin Tippman. How many times have we seen this before, Jay Prince? Uh, too many over the last three years. One of the most consistent players in the area. Another first down for the Saints. And then from the one-yard line, they let that big offensive line finish it off. Lytle sneaks in, Dwinger retakes the lead, and they hold on to win a good one, 27-14, to your final. Dwinger is 2-0, so now we roll on up to Carroll. Chargers coming off a 48-14 win over Lures last week, looking to move to 2-0 as well, and they continue to roll today. Already up big, Snyder trying to get something going before half. Darren Swanson hooks up with a Dorian Rogers for the big pitch and catch. Rogers takes it deep into Charger territory. A few plays later, Langston Lavelle takes the handoff. He plows his way in from a couple yards out. Snyder gets on the board, but it's 33 to six. And then make no mistake about it, this one all about Carroll tonight. Jeff Becker, a big reason why, hooks up with Jamison Coverstone down the right sideline for the big game. Becker goes for 364 and three scores. This one, though, he lets Hunter Mertz take the glory. Punches it in from a yard out. Carroll takes a 42-6 lead to half. 
They rolled with a 42-12 win. They're 2-0. Snyder's 0-2 for the first time since 93. Chargers look like contenders. We head to Spooler Stadium. Northrop coming off their big upset win over Homestead last week, taking on Southside late second quarter. Fourth, about four to go for the Bruins. Demarius Cowan takes the pitch, but he's not going anywhere. Trevor Hapner makes the play on the sideline. Archers take over. Ensuing touch for Southside. And, and check this. This would have this would have been one of those sequences, yeah. Prince, that would have been fun with fans. Because Jelante Hinton forces the fumble, picks the ball. You think, hey, we got the ball. And then all of a sudden, if you're a Northrop fan, you, you don't have the ball. The effort for Matthew Morris to track him down. He forces the fumble, recovers in the end zone. That's a touchback and a touchdown saving play. But on the ensuing possession, Rashawn Boone picks off Roosevelt Norfleet the third. Bruins would take a 7-0 lead into half. They take this one 27-7, and they're 2-0 for the first time since 2006. Good win for Coach Dorfler and company. Next stop takes us to Zollner Stadium, a brand new Zollner Stadium. Concordia How's Lutheran. it look out there? Beautiful, man. That scoreboard Beautiful. looks nice. So does that turf. Yeah. First game ever on the turf for Concordia, hosting Homestead. Early on, all about defense. Pressure on Evan Ormsby. They force an Aaron throw. James Rusher right there for the pick. Cadets take over, but can't do anything with it. Second quarter now. Cadets on offense. Homestead pays him right back. Eli Maddox's pass tip. Picked by Graham Collin. Ensuing drive. Spartans finally get some offense going. Ormsby connecting with Jared Kistler for the first down. A few plays later, why not go back to your big D1 target? Ormsby hits Kistler on the slant. He does the rest. Spartans get on the board. They go up seven, and that's all the scoring this one sees tonight. Homestead's win, Homestead wins a tough one on the road, 7-0. They improve to 1-1. One and one. So that was the defensive battle. This was, was anything <laughs> but, Jake Prince. If you like scoring, this was the game for you. Sherwood Haydock and Wayne hosting Bishop Lures. And like I said, no shortage of scoring in this one. Generals down six when we pick it up second quarter, but they're on the move. Sean Collins getting to the outside for a first down. Then later in the drive, good work from Wayne up front. That's a walk-in touchdown for Lamarion Nelson. Two-point conversion, good. Generals take a two-point lead. But back comes Bishop Lures. It was back and forth all night. Ensuing possession, Kyle Lindsey dials up the screenplay. Ramon Anderson bobbing and weaving his way through traffic. Finally brought down inside the 30. That would set up this field goal attempt for Roel Pineda. That's a lonely fan. And Pineda, he's the only guy over there. Pineda is pure, but he was happy about that one. Puts the Knights back on top at 17 to 16. Lures goes on to win 49 to 36. Hope you took the over there. And we move on down south, a battle of the small schools. Adam Central welcoming East Side to the landing strip tonight. 21-14 Blazers. We pick this one up in the third. East Side QB Laven Davis drops the ball right into the spot where the only Adam Central defender couldn't get it. Wade Miller it reins it in. Blazers go up 28-14. East Side fans cheering from outside the stadium. AC trying to make something happen. Alex Curry swings around the end, takes a big chunk of yardage with him. Pushed out of bounds right into your living room a few plays later. Similar outcome, Ryan Black looking downfield, decides to keep it himself. Gets another first down, but the drive would end there in the fourth now. Black goes for it downfield. His pass picked off by Johnny Eck. He gets some yards back, but eventually brought down Eastside. Good win for them on the road. 28-14, your final over AC. Hey, you can go down to the landing strip and get a win. That is absolutely a good one. Uh, we head up to Napanee, Northwood, taking on defending 4A semi-state champion East Noble. Opening drive for Northwood, Nate Newcomer. Doesn't look like a newcomer here. Rolls out looking for a receiver, doesn't find one, so he's going to take it himself. 20 yards, breaking tackles. His replacement, Caden Loam, would pick up the slack a little bit later. Quarterback sneak for a Panther touchdown. Gives Northwood the lead, but East Noble, Prince, we know how tough these nights oh, are, and they, so they come right back. Aiden Jones catching the touchdown pass there for the Knights from Cole Stenson. Dalton Stinson, I should say. Knights win tonight, 15 to 14. Good win on the road for them. To Albion we go. A couple of 1-0 teams 
Doing battle, Central Noble hosting Columbia City. Eagles up eight when we pick this one up. Late third quarter, Greg Bolt finds Martin Smith, who fights his way forward for a first down. Later in the drive, they go to the air once again, but this time Bolt picked off by Ashton Smith. Incredible concentration here from the junior. Central Noble gets the ball back with a chance to tie, but they couldn't do anything with it. Sea City's defense holds, and now their offense ready to put this game away. Garrett Geiger with a big gain, and then it's Bolt keeping it on the option. This young man can throw it, but he's got some wheels, too. Finishes it off with some punch. Wait for it. Wait for it. There's the punch. There you go. The Eagles pull That's away. It. They move to 2-0. I, I wouldn't want to be in his way. No. 28-7, your final. He's coming downhill at no. me. Uh, we head to Wagner Field. Southwood Knights at home taking on the Oak Hill Golden Eagles. Pick this one up third quarter. You saw the pass from Alex Farr to Logan Barley. Same possession. Farr is going to punch it in from seven yards out. Just like that, the Knights have a 28-6 lead. On the kickoff, they decide they want to try and get some more. Of course <laughs> you do. They're able to recover the onside kick. Coach Snyder... Getting tricky with it, and that leads to Tristan Hayslett punching it in for seven himself. Southwood rolls in this one tonight. You see the scoreboard, 35-13, to 13, the final. We stay in Wabash County. Northfield playing host to Tippecanoe Valley. End of the first quarter, 12-0 Vikings. Second quarter, defensive battle. Not a whole lot of offense. Sacked there from Quentin Aldridge. Leads to a three and out. Northfield would respond. Big run right here from number 20, Mason Fisher. That sets up a field goal. And then a sack after the field goal by Northfield would end. But unfortunately for Northfield, they do fall tonight. Good win on the road for Tippy Valley. 18-10, your final Vikings. Down in Ossian, the Norwell Knights hosting Casey Colkman and his Patriots. And, and this, one, this one was not pretty if you're a no. Heritage fan. Norwell marching down the field on their first drive of the game. Max Ringer in from one yard out. It's 7-0 Norwell right off the bat. Heritage trying to make something happen on the next possession. Pinned back deep. Chris Baker going to throw the ball up to a towering Kiel Eldridge, one of the best uh, Division I prospects in the oh. area. Ball is bobbled, but, but you see why coaches are after him. Able to bring the, uh, the ball down for a first down catch. The Knights, though, they were too tough tonight. Heritage punting on fourth down. Norwell quarterback Eli Riley, who is also their punt returner, Prince, he's an athlete, and uh, you're going to see him be an athlete right here. Miss one tackle, miss two tackles, big block, Whoop! and another missed tackle, and uh, Eli's off to the races. 65 yards later, you know, that could have been our play of the night. It really could have. Hindsight's 20-20. Norwell <laughs> rolls the Patriots 35-7, to your final. We make our way over to Turtle Town now. Churubusco looking for its first one of the season. They take on Lakeland. Eagles already up a score when we pick this one up first half, and they're looking for more. Wyatt Marks gets a nice chunk on this play. Later on in the drive, it's Marks again. This time, he finds pay dirts, and the Eagles now have a two-touchdown lead. Marks wasn't done either. Later in the first half, he cashes in six more, 107 yards, Three touchdowns for Mr. Marks on the night. Busco bounces back. 43-0 your final over Lakeland. I'd call that a bounce back. Yes. Uh, we head out to New Haven. Bulldogs opened their season with an impressive win over Garrett last week. Tonight taking on 4A number 15 Mississinawa in their home opener. This one was a defensive battle early. First possession of the game for the Indians. Carson Campbell. This kid's a player now. Dre Wright wraps him up in the backfield. New Haven forces a three and out. Ensuing possession. Dogs. Trying to do something with it. Jarrell Jackson finds a hole, gets first down yardage, but that's about as far as the Bulldogs would get on this particular drive. Elijah Stanridge comes up with the sack of Jakar Williams here. This one's scoreless after the first quarter, but it's New Haven that ultimately prevails 22 to 14. So Jimmy Lennon Lin and company are 2-0. Good win for Jimmy Lennon and company. After going winless a year ago, South Bend Adams trying to start this season 2-0, hosting Woodland. They start quick. First drive, Gavin pulling, pull, puts it up. Sydney Jeffries hauls it in for a 23-yard score. Adams up seven after their first drive. Those Jeffries, old red unis. Wow. I like it. I like it. I like it that, a lot. That threw me a little bit. 
That's Chuck Worsham. He goes right up the middle, 25 yards. It's 14 nothing. And then on the next drive, pulling, looking for Jeffries again, 33 yards. Woodland fans look away. This one was ugly. Adams rolls 50 to nothing. The Eagles are 2 0 on the year. Uh, we head up to Leo, a big non-conference tilt for the Lions. Of course, this game was added, I believe, on Wednesday. They were supposed Wednesday to play, or Thursday. Supposed to play Angola. That game gets canceled, so uh, you get to take on 4A number 4 Mooresville. Pioneers jumped out to an early 14-3 lead. Back comes Leo. Hayden Miller, there he goes 48 yards. Lions pull back within four, but... Mooresville, there's a reason they're ranked number four in the state. It's a 20 to 10 game when Caden Robinson plunges in from a couple yards out. Pioneers take a 13 point lead to half. They double up Leo tonight, 34 to 17. Let's take a look at some other scores from around the area tonight. South Adams, they moved to 2 0 all over Lewis Cass, 55 7. Bluffton, they're 2 0 as well. They top Manchester 22 to nothing. Huntington, 47. Jay County, 8. That's a final. And Fremont, all over Prairie Heights, 40 to nothing. The final up in the Grange. Fairfield gets their first win of the season, 57 to 6 over Osceola Grace. Meanwhile, Wawasee shuts out West Noble, 31 to nothing. Good start to the year for Wawasee. Yeah. Uh, Michigan City, 41. Warsaw, 21. And Peru, all over Whitco tonight, 49 to 14. The final there. And last but not least, Wamash. They moved to one and one on the young season, 14 nothing winners over Alexandria tonight. All right, time for our play of the night. Like I said, hindsight being 2020, yeah. the, the Eli Riley play would have been pretty good, but but this one, this one's just fun. Like I said, I mean, if there's if there's fans in the stands here, this is going, they're going wild. I mean, they're going wild right here if you're a Northwood fan, and then all of a sudden the there the ball comes out and shades of Don Beebe and Leon Lett from Super Bowl 27 out there. Were you alive for that one? I was. I was. That was only 27 years ago, so I was two. Super Bowl 27. What year was that? 1993. Yeah, see, I wasn't, somewhere I wasn't born yet. So that's what that's a reference I do not understand. My uh, I believe that was last time the Bills were in the Super Bowl as well. So yeah, it didn't it didn't end well for no, them. No, it did not. I know that. Well, but, uh, there's your, there's your play of the night. Right yeah. there.